Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar here at TechSoup. It's going to be about software subscription. I am so happy to hear this topic because as your company grows, your nonprofit grows, so will the number of tools that you use. So today, Nacho Nacho, I love saying that name, we'll discuss how you can ensure that you're not overpaying for software and that every dollar that you use for your nonprofit is spent effectively. I'm Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I want to discuss how you can engage today. If this is your first time being here at TechSoup, the closed caption is on. Excuse me, the closed caption is on. So all you have to do is type, uh, tap the CC button. Only tap it if you need it, because a lot of people say they tap it and then it shows up on the full screen. So only tap it if you need it. If you learned something cool today, why don't you share it with us on social media? We will email everything within 40 hours, the slides, the presentation, so you'll have all of that. Please type your questions in the Q&A. Um, if you type in the chat room, we'll be able to grab it from the chat room as well. So I wanna go ahead and turn this over and introduce our speech today. Today we have with us um, Sanjay Go. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. If I'm not, let me know. And we have Patrick Fong. Um, Sanjay is the CEO of Nacho Nacho, and you'll hear more about them in just a moment. So Patrick, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to you and thank you both for being here today. Thank you so much, Aretha. I really appreciate that. So a little about, about myself. Um, I am based in Illinois uh, and I am the growth manager here at Nacho Nacho. We focus on working with tech-enabled businesses to make sure that they're getting every last bit of value that they can out of all their tech subscriptions. Sanjay? Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending this. I'm Sanjay Goyal. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Nacho Nacho, and I look forward to our conversation today. Fantastic. OK, I am going to share my screen. Can everybody see this? Yes. OK, fantastic. So hello and welcome to our webinar about subscription management best practices. I'm so excited to be speaking to each one of you about a topic today that is very near and dear to my heart, overpaying for subscriptions. So who's ever looked at their card statement and saw a subscription that you, a charge for a subscription you weren't really using? I know it happens to me all the time. Um, I'm going to start with a quick anecdote about something that happened in my personal life, and then we're going to move over to um, issues about company and organizations uh, and subscriptions. So uh, I've tried to cancel a gym membership when the pandemic hit. I was living in Brooklyn and nobody was going to the gyms. The whole city was on lockdown and those early days, just walking outside felt like wandering into a minefield. So nobody was going to gyms. In fact, gyms weren't even open. I was really surprised when my card got charged as usual for my monthly uh, membership fee. This was a Manhattan gym with Manhattan prices, which was really, really hefty. I called them dozens of times and yet I wasn't able to reach them. It took them three whole months to actually get back to me. And they told me I had to physically go into the gym in order to cancel. At this point, I was beyond frustrated. Now, when we take the issues of managing an individual subscriptions in their personal lives and increase that exponentially through the complexity of an organization with multiple members, different departments, tracking and management subscriptions becomes chaotic and really time consuming. Welcome to the headache called subscription sprawl. So who here knows how many subscriptions you're paying for within the company? We'll give you maybe a minute or so just to put in your answers there. <clears throat> okay, I see less than five, five to 10, more than 10. I see a good number that don't know. Yeah, that's about what we expected. So we call this issue subscription sprawl. Everybody uses a lot of different tools. As your uh, nonprofit grows, you'll have donor relations, you'll have operations, maybe a finance team, maybe a marketing team. And each one of those people are going to need multiple different software in order to fulfill their function. So we at Nacho Nacho have worked with hundreds of tech enabled businesses to help reduce unnecessary subscription expenses at this point. And we've identified six major points that lead to overspending on software. The first one is free trials. So free stuff is great. Who doesn't like to get things for free? 
But as we say here at Nacho Nacho, there's no such thing as a free meal. Software vendors will entice you to enter your payment information with promises of free services upfront and then hope you forget to cancel. Once you put in your information, what I used to do was set a calendar reminder to cancel the subscription before the end of the trial so that I wouldn't get charged. Otherwise, I would have to end up chasing the software vendor to refund me for the software that I really didn't need or eat the cost and move on. So either one of two things would happen. We would end up losing money or we would end up losing time in chasing for the refund. There was a really particularly egregious case of this. I'm not gonna call them out here by name, but there was a founder community that was offering a, a very low cost trial, $1 for a whole week. And they didn't say what their full price was on their website. After this week ended, they char tried to charge me $500 for a full year subscription. So there's that free trial for you. <laughs> um, it was a very common practice. And unfortunately, it's, it's somewhat deceptive. The next point is that sometimes software subscriptions end up becoming rather difficult to cancel. This makes total sense. Of course, it's not in any company's best interest for you to be able to stop paying for them, which explains why I had such a tough time with my gym. To that point, many software companies have maybe made it very difficult to find their unsubscribe button. They'll force you maybe to speak to one of their representatives on the phone um, or email them or perhaps type in an entry on their chat box on the website. It can take hours or even days of communication with them just for you to stop paying for something. The other alternative is you could cancel a card, more on that later, um, but they make it very, very tough on purpose, a high friction experience. Next point is many times uh, a company will have unused subscriptions. So this can occur from time to time when a organization moves from one platform to another. Let's say that we were using Canva in order to do graphic design. Maybe you've heard of Canva, maybe not. And then we decide to move to Adobe Illustrator for graphic design. Adobe has slightly more features, so that totally makes sense. Somewhere in this process of, oh, deciding what software are we gonna use? What, when are we gonna start using it? What plan do we need? How do we migrate all our access over? Um, we forget, oh, we have to cancel the subscription of the first platform. Oh no, that ends up uh, costing the company more as well. The next point is duplicate subscriptions. So this can happen when two different employees within the company subscribe to the same product separately. Um, maybe we have two separate subscriptions for a, a software like Active Campaign. We have two separate um, people that are paying for the same thing. Since not everyone is always broadcasting exactly what they're paying for and using, this becomes another point where people overpay. Another point is that vendors can overcharge from time to time. This is in a somewhat similar vein to the free trial effect. You start up on a very cheap plan or a low tier and you get that pricing for a few months. Pretty happy using the software, it's really, really great. Um, but as the payment structure changes or because your usage went up, you end up suddenly with a really much larger bill. This happened to us with a software that you might have heard with before, heard about before called HubSpot. They charge based on how many contacts you have in their database. The first couple of months, it was really, really cheap. But as soon as we hit that threshold, they hit us with a really large bill. And the final point, number six, is orphaned subscriptions. This is what we call subscriptions that belong to employees that end up leaving the company. We all love our employees. We all want to um, be very close to the people that we work with. But unfortunately, sometimes they leave. And when they leave, the process of offboarding is very, very important. Um, for example, if there is somebody who in your company that you're paying for LinkedIn premium for, something that we've seen happen a lot is when this company, this person leaves the company, your card is paying for that LinkedIn premium subscription. If you have everything on one corporate card, the only way that you're able to stop that subscription because you don't have access to that person's account is to cancel the card or to ask them to do it very nicely uh, for you. So in order to deal with these different issues, who's ever used a spreadsheet like this? Lots of different rows, lots of different things to update every single month to track all the different software subscriptions that you're using. This can be a little bit painful from time to time, and it takes hours and hours to make sure that this thing is, this uh, tracking spreadsheet is up to date every single month. 
This is where Nacho Nacho comes in. So we've built a one-stop shop for businesses to manage, discover, and save on all the different SaaS products that they use. Our product allows us to um, find one card for you to use one card per vendor, as well as pay for everything from a single payment source. And you also get a dashboard where you see all the different subscriptions that the company is paying for, as well as how much is being charged on a month-to-month -month basis. It'll be really, really easy to cancel any single subscription that you're paying for. It'll be just a single click of a button. Whenever you're trying to pay for a free trial, you'll be able to set exactly when the card gets canceled. So you'll never have to chase after a vendor again to refund a free trial fee. And it takes literally seconds to offer employees. So when set up with the SaaS management platform like Nacho Nacho, you'll be able to cancel all the single employees subscriptions within a single second. That means no more um, orphan subscriptions. When this employee leaves, they're, you're no longer paying for anything for them. There's no more surprise charges. You'll be able to keep all your money safe with very tight limits on your cards. And you'll be very e easily able to identify any kind of overspends, overcharges through your uh, natural cards. So I'm gonna leave the floor open for a quick Q&A. Uh, does anybody have any questions, any experiences that they would like to share related to the software subscriptions that they've had? Right now, there are no questions in the Q&A. Feel free to type your questions in the Q&A or mm -hmm. in the chat section. Okay, let me see. Question, what is... Um, How much do, does Nacho Nacho charge? Okay, saw a whole bunch come in. Uh, so first, Dan, um, Nacho Nacho costs $5 per user per month. Um, and it's a all-inclusive platform where you're able to organize all of these different subscriptions that you have. Um, however, as we are a partner with, uh, with TechSoup and you are a TechSoup nonprofit, you'll actually get the platform for $2.5 um, per user per month, which is 50% off fee. From TK, do you have to start a whole new subscription or does it get imported? Um, so for the subscriptions, the way that we help you manage everything is on the virtual card level through the payment method. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give a demonstration of this in a moment. What about subscriptions on ACH? <coughs> so Nacho Nacho only works for subscriptions that you're paying for through credit cards or debit cards. I bought Adobe for a monthly fee, no idea what I am paying for, and Fonva. So is that, is that, Anne, is that you're not sure why you're paying for Adobe or you're not sure how much you're paying for Adobe? Let, let, let me know um, in the, in the mess, through messaging. And then Tara, how does this work with subscriptions through TechSoup? That's a great question. We're gonna go through the platform in a moment and we are going to um, answer that. User, is that a person at our organization or is, the each, or is the user each subscription that you add? That's a great question, uh, Mr. Anonymous or Ms. Anonymous. Um, it is each member of your organization. So for example, if I'm the only person at this organization, which is using Nacho Nacho, it would cost $2, $2.5 per use uh, for, per month. If there were two people at this organization, um, because of the TechSoup relationship, it would cost us $5 per month. Okay, so Anne, uh, feel free to let me know uh, if you're not sure if you're, what, what you're paying for with Adobe or if you're not sure what price you're paying for. Um, yes. You oh, oh, oh. That, um, I thought I needed it to keep PDF, but I'm not sure what it actually offers us. We're small, all mm -hmm. about here, um, very untechy nonprofit. I see, I see. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, and this is a really great reason to use a, a, a SaaS management platform like Nacho Nacho. So you get all of these different subscriptions that the company is paying for on one page. You get to see exactly what you're paying for and it makes the decision, okay, are we actually getting value from this? 
um, very easy to make. So I'm going to move from my slides quickly to the Nacho Nacho platform, and we're going to see what it looks like, um, how you can use our service in order to make sure that you don't overpay for any of the software services that you're using. Okay, so we're going to go into Bob's account over here. Now, this is the Nacho Nacho homepage. You're able to see on a month-to-month -month basis, how much are we paying for different kinds of software? If I were to want to pay for some kind of software, for example, Canva, I would go to Nacho Cards here and I would create a new card. I would assign it to a member of our team. Let's say I'm Bob and I'm gonna assign this card to Bob. I would enter the name of the software that I'm paying for over here, Canva. Okay, perfect. And then I can add a spending limit. So this is where the really real power of Nacho Nacho comes in. We're able to say for this individual card that we're gonna to use to pay for only this software subscription, how much is gonna be spent per month? So I could say, oh, $50 per month or $20 per month or $100 per month based on what kind of Canva subscription we're paying for. So let's say that I'm going to spend $25 per month on Canva. And boom, this card has been created. It's not a real card, by the way, so <laughs> don't try to spend anything on it. Um, so if anybody, if Canva tries to charge us $20 in this month, then, this, then, then the payment is gonna go through. If they try to charge us $26 per month, then this subscription is actually not gonna go through and I'll get a notification on my email um, and we, we can have a discussion with Canva about, okay, um, they tried to charge us more than we were originally planning to pay for. Why is that? Do we need this? So it adds that extra layer of safety of security. They won't just charge your card. They don't have carte blanche on how much you're paying them. Um, you get that control back. Another feature that's really great is if I ever have an issue with any kind of, uh, any kind of software vendor, I could click a single button and I could suspend the card. So what this means is this card can no longer be charged. Let's say that I'm working with a particular kind of software and we've identified that we really don't need this anymore. So before, you know, we might have to go onto the website and go through a very lengthy retention loop. Maybe we're not sure exactly where the subscription canceling button is. Maybe they've hidden it. Maybe you'll have to, you know, speak to somebody on through customer service on the phone. Um, it might take some time, but here it's very, very simple. All you have to do is click the single button they're not gonna charge you anymore. That's all that matters. If you decide to change your mind, you'd be able to reactivate it with the same click of a button. You can also cancel this card. So once you cancel a card, it can't be reactivated. If you need to change the amount of money that's being spent on the card, for example, oh, you know, we're gonna upgrade Canva because we're finding a lot of value from it. In fact, we're gonna add more members of our team to do the design in Canva we can edit the amount of money that can be spent on it per month. We could say, oh, we don't want a limit. <laughs> they can charge us as much as they want. Or we can say, oh, per month, we wanna spend, let's say $80 on Canva. So it's easy as that to change the limit. Another fantastic feature that Nacho Nacho has that I've used a lot personally is the card expiry date. So this is really great when you are trying out a new kind of software. I would create a card. Let's say I'm trying out a software like uh, SEMrush. That's an SEO kind of software that in case you haven't heard of before. And I get a one week trial. After the one week trial, they're gonna start charging the card. Well, what am I gonna do? Let's say that the trial is starting today on September the 13th of 2022. Um, that means the trial is gonna end on September 20th. So what I'm gonna do is after the 18th, this card is going to expire. So if I've just set the expiry date and on that day when they try to char charge the card, it's gonna get declined. And it's a free trial. So there's, no, there's nothing that we owe them. I just don't need to set another reminder on my calendar to cancel the trial before then. There's no more chasing them. It makes the ex whole experience of trying new software significantly, significantly easier. 
So we're gonna move forward from nacho cards and we're gonna to move to members. This is the section of the platform where you're able to invite other people to your company. So let's say that I have a nonprofit called Acme Corporation. These are the members of Acme Corporation. We've got Bob Ross, we've got Alan Sten, we've got Nazareth Pavley, we've got Vanessa Tenzing. And what we're gonna do is, oh, we're gonna invite, we're gonna um, invite a new member. And this person is gonna be head of donor relations. So as head of the donor relations, we're gonna add them as a either admin or purchaser or analyst. We're gonna add them as a purchaser, but an admin is able to add payment sources. They can create natural cards. They can set budgets. Um, they can also invite other members. They can assign people's roles. The purchaser can just see the natural card which we have assigned to them. So let's say this person who we're inviting, they are Robert dot Dylan at gmail.com. And we're gonna invite Robert Dylan. We can see this person has been invited to our account. So how this is gonna change our experience is when I go to Nacho Cards, I'm able to assign a card to Robert Dylan. And I can give them access to budget to pay for some kind of software that they need in the operation in their in their work. So let's say that as a donor relations person, he needs to be able to pay for HubSpot. So I can put in HubSpot and then set the spend per month. So let's say he's going to spend $200 per month on HubSpot. So they'll, Robert Dillon is now going to be notifi notified of their new card, of their new budget that they're allowed to spend on HubSpot. If we go to members, we can see all this information about Robert Dillon. Now, when Robert Dillon leaves the company, if he has to go for any reason, it's very, very easy to offboard him. Of course, we'll have to um, make sure that all his credentials are, are, are canceled. We don't do that. But it's very easy to manage the payments that he has. So all we have to do is click a single button over here, go into his account, and we can suspend all of his cards. This is much better than paying for everything with the same corporate card, but because if we were paying for Robert Dillon's uh, software with our credit card, our corporate credit card, that means that he still has access to information after he leaves the company. Now that's not ideal, it's not the best security. These virtual cards mean um, if he, there's no opportunity for anybody that leaves the company to use the company's financial information for fraud. So it's as easy as clicking this button and then suspending all of their cards. Next feature I'll show you is we can actually go into an individual's account and we can see, oh, how much are they spending on software every single month? We can see the individual subscriptions that they have. I can see, okay, Bob Ross, he's using Calendly. He's using LinkedIn. He's paying for Hootsuite and he's also paying for Loom. That's great. And then I'm going to show subscriptions over here. This is another very important screen for the company. We're able to see all the different software that somebody is paying for. Oh, okay. So we have LinkedIn, people are paying for Canva, people are paying for Sentry, Webflow, Atlassian, all great software products. Let's take a look at LinkedIn. So there's three different people in this company right now that are paying for LinkedIn. One of the cards is suspended. So this subscription is no longer being used, but we can also see that Vanessa and Bob Ross, they're both using LinkedIn at the moment. We can also see, oh, Bob Ross, Vanessa, and Nazareth, they're all paying for Calendly. Well, I know that Calendly actually has a Teams function. So if, if, we're, if we're paying for three different subscriptions from three individual people, we're losing out on some of the functionality that you get for getting a Calendly team account. So this is something that we could do. You know, We'll get more features if we move all the subscriptions to the same account, some insight.
Next thing I'll show you is the different transactions. We're able to see exactly what the company is being paid for, uh, is paying for on a day-to-day -day basis. So Intercom, QuickBooks, Acme, Sentry, Canva, all these different products are being paid for through the company card. The next thing I'll show you is the Nacho Rewards Program. So Nacho Nacho has direct relationships with over 300, over 200 um, software providers at this point. And that means that we have uh, found really great deals where you can dis get discounts and so, uh, cash back um, for software that you're already paying for. I'm gonna show you what that looks like over here. So the Nacho Nacho marketplace is absolutely incredible. We've built these direct relationships with companies, great cam companies like Canva, AWS, uh, 15.5, HubSpot, Monday, um, in order to make sure that you get the most value out of all the different software that you're paying for. If you have, for example, AWS, if you have a website hosted there, you'll get $5,000 in credits just for uh, being a Nacho Nacho user. All you have to do is create a card for AWS here, assign it to somebody, AWS, and you get that, you, you'll get those credits. The cashback deals you will see here through Nacho Rewards. You can see that this person has $170 worth of cashback available. And we can see over here, oh, here's the different software that they were paying for, which was eligible for cashback. So they're paying for Postmark, Acme, Slack. Okay, so we're gonna leave some time for a couple of questions. I see that there are a couple that uh, popped up in the Q&A over here. Let's see. Yeah, Patrick, lots of kudos, great work. It, I'm so impressed myself. This is an amazing platform. Um, do you wanna read the questions or you want me to read them? You got it? Yeah, yeah, I, I've got the questions. Thank you very much, Aretha. Yep, so what if the vendor changes its price? Um, is this in relation to the cash back or Tom, would you, would you mind, um, expounding on that question? I appreciate that additional context would be great. Does canceling cards in this way have an impact on your organization's credit rating? No, it has no impact at all. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. Constant contact does a quarterly payment. How would you track that? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. And in fact, because you mentioned constant contact, I believe, yeah, constant contact is actually one of those companies that we have a direct relationship with. So if you create a new account with constant contact and you pay for it through Nacho Nacho, you get 25% cash back um, on paying for them. So if you're paying for constant contact, what I would recommend is creating a Nacho card here. And if you're doing a quarterly payment, I would say set it per year. So take the amount that you're paying for them every single quarter and set it for the whole year, multiply that by four. So if you're paying them $250 or $500 per quarter, um, multiply $500 by four and you set you get $2,000. So I would set, I'm paying constant contact $2,000 per year. Hope that answers your question. If, is, the, is the per user just the individual managing the payments, finance, team, three people, or is it the total staff of the organization? So not everybody within your organization needs to have a Nacho Nacho account, but many of our users find that very, very valuable, very, very useful. The feature that I shared earlier where you have members and you are able to cancel and manage the subscription for individual members, many people find that very valuable. We don't have to use that function if you would rather save the money. What security certifications compliance do you have and how secure is our data with you? That's a fantastic uh, question, Richard. So all of our financial information we're, we're storing with a secure third-party provider. 
um, we uh, uh, we could adhere to all fintech security regulations. Sanjay, um, do you have anything that you would like to add to that? Oh, you're muted, by the way. Yeah, happy to answer that. So yeah, we are very, very particular about uh, security and data. So in terms of data privacy, all your transactions that you do, they never leave our backend, our servers. They're they are, uh, locked into our servers. We never share that data with anybody. In terms of security, we don't store any financially sensitive information in our own servers. It's stored in uh, third-party, very large companies like Stripe or Webflow. And we spend a lot of money and our own engineering resources to make sure that any financially sensitive information is not stored in our servers, it's stored in third-party servers. And then we have set up mechanisms to communicate with those uh, vaults to be able to use information as and when needed. So for example, <clears throat> when Patrick showed you, Patrick, if you go to Nacho Cards, and pull up, uh, click on any one card. So this information that you just saw, it, that card information is not sitting in our servers, it's sitting in a third party like Stripe. And it's retrieved on demand only as long as you're looking at this information. And as, as soon as you shut this down, that information is, is again, uh, basically gone. It's not available anywhere except in third party vaults. So because uh, the third parties we use, like Stripe, are PCI compliant, that makes us PCI compliant as well. Thanks, Sanjay. I hope that answers your questions. Um, if you have any further concerns, feel free to uh, reach out to us on our website. We'll definitely leave some contact information at the end. More than happy to answer any other remaining questions you might have. Um, I saw from Jill Lounsbury. It, what if you work for no, multiple nonprofits that are under one nonprofit? Can you combine all of them into one account with different profiles? So what we've seen from a couple of our users um, is that if they work for, they, they manage payments for different um, business units under the same umbrella corporation that they want to generally separate these out. And we have a feature that enables you to do that, which is you can create more than one business account. So this is one account. Um, we can see that the monthly totals, the, the total spend, the notch card, the members for each, um, for, for this entire account for Acme Corporation. Uh, if you wanted to create another one for a separate nonprofit business unit, then you would create a new buyer account. So that would be a blank slate with new members, new notch cards, new subscriptions, new payment source, what have you. And uh, Jacqueline Weller, by user, I mean uh, account, a separate Nacho Nacho account. So somebody who has a member, uh, who shows up under members here. Anonymous attendee asks, does this only work for software? Can it be used for other kinds of purchases? That's a fantastic question. And actually that's a pretty large use case for Nacho Nacho. So some people, um, they actually end up creating a physical Nacho card. You're able to assign one to, uh, you can get one delivered to you in the mail if you live in the United States. Um, yeah. So people end up using them for um, one-off payments, for example, not just subscriptions, but perhaps paying for a contracting, um, uh, uh, paying for a contractor's fee or paying for hardware we see sometimes. Um, so Nacho cards, they work just like a normal Visa credit card. You can pay for absolutely anything with them. And then Kevin Mulhall asks, say a card is created for Azure services, AWS or GCP resources. If a preset spending limit has been hit in a standard scenario, the service would stop running. Is there a way to create an elastic amount that is set to X amount, but can increase to Y? That's a fantastic question, Kevin. So we generally recommend that's not, that exact feature is not available at Nacho Nacho at the moment, but we generally recommend that you would create a card with a limit that is higher than what, if so if, if there's a variable um, subscription amount, we would recommend that you set that to the upper limit of what you would expect that to be. Let me know if that answers your question or not. Feel free to um, uh, reach out if, if you have further questions too. Maybe I can, I can just add there as well that <clears throat> if, if your card gets declined because the charge was higher than the limit you set, 
normally the cloud hosting provider will not cut off your service right away. Uh, they will ping you, they will warn you that your card has been declined and give you an opportunity, usually over many, many days and over multiple notifications to uh, for you to update your card details. And also you will get an immediate notification from Nacho Nacho saying that uh, your card uh, did not, payment did not go through because of your limit. And all you need to do is go back into your Nacho Nacho account, increase the limit, and go back into your uh, GCP or Azure or AWS and just click the pay again button and then it will go through. Mm -hmm. And one more thing that I'll add, add to that to piggyback off Sanjay's point, um, the default situation that would happen if you were to pay with a normal corporate card is AWS would pay, or would well, not necessarily AWS, but whatever service you're paying for would just charge you however much that they, they can calculate. And they'll be very happy to charge you. However, this extra step adds some ability and space for you to think about and consider, okay, does it really make sense that they're paying, that they're charging us uh, this much? And it changes the relationship. Instead of you asking them saying like this, it, I feel like this is um, too much for what you're offering us. It gives you the opportunity to say, okay, um, we're, 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 we're not paying you yet. Um, let us think for a little bit. And you'll probably end up paying them anyways, but it gives you that space, which is very valuable. Um, so Alexander von Winterfeld, can your tool track when a subscription starts and ends? Do we enter that data and do, can we get email reminders? That's a fantastic point. So you'll see in the transactions, uh, portion that, um, you'll see in under the transactions tabs over here, let's say for postmark, we know that this is a monthly subscription and we'll know that it's going to hit us on September 10th of every single month. Um, however, it doesn't track exactly at the moment um, the period or the term of the subscription. So let me add to that. If you go to subscriptions tab <clears throat> on the left side and go to the spreadsheet view on the top right, uh, instead of the grid view, <clears throat> this gives you a lot more detail on every subscription and you can actually add a lot of these uh, fields on your own. You can say, when did the subscription begin? When did the subscription end? <clears throat> and you can also download this into a spreadsheet. And this is a much, much more um, uh, kind of analytical view of your subscriptions. And you can also add your own categories and, and do a lot of spreadsheet type work, but inside your Nacho Nacho account. And then based on that, you will get pings on um, subscription starts and expiries. Obviously, uh, um, Patrick also showed you that in your Nacho card itself, maybe if you can go to Nacho cards, and if you go to a specific card, that you can also set your start date and end date on the card itself. So uh, you can say this card starts on certain day, let's say 15th of October, um, <clears throat> and then it ends six months from then. So you have complete control over when any payment can begin and any payment can end. Yep. Thanks, Andre. Hope that answers your question. The next question is from Don Mattox, who asks, who is my banker who pays my bills? That's fantastic. I mentioned earlier, there's no such thing as a free lunch for not paying for everything for you. So you can enter your payment source over here. Um, you'll be able to connect a U.S. bank account directly, or you can also connect a debit card or credit card. We connect through Plaid. So it'll be, you'll be able to just put in all your banking information right here. Let's say, for example, if I'm using, oh, PNC Bank, I'll be able to connect with PNC. Oh, X, exit. <laughs> And I'm also able to pay with debit cards and credit cards, although we don't usually recommend that for people who are based in the United States because working direct connected bank account directly is cheapest. Um, we have another question from an anonymous attendee. If you already have nonprofit rates from these vendors, will you lo lose that rate using Nacho Nacho? No, you will not. So you will have um, the cashback that we offer is all in addition to um, all the other uh, deals that you have. So if you already have a deal with TechSoup, you will not lose the deal with TechSoup.
Yeah. So another question by Jason is cashback applicable for software attained through TechSoup nonprofit discount? Um, it depends on it, it. It'll depend on a um, software to software basis, but generally, yes. Can you link your Stripe account? I don't believe so. Sanjay? Oh, you're muted, by the way. Uh, not yet. The only way to pay us right now is either connecting your bank account, um, which is what Patrick showed you, or uh, paying us with a debit card or credit card. You can also wire funds if you're uh, in a country outside the US where uh, the debit card or credit card has issues um, or the, the fees are very high, you can just uh, wire us funds as well. Thanks, Andre. Hope that answers your question. Okay, from Jacqueline Wheeler. Oh, P, P appreciates Bob Ross. Yeah, I love Bob Ross too, thank you. Can you get cash back on top of TechSoup? How about paying for hydro or gas bills? <laughs> That's funny, Kristen. Yeah, so it actually turns out that a lot, so you're able to have your Nacho Nacho account for, that's a great question. You're able to have your Nacho Nacho account for your business, for your nonprofit. But if you want help managing oh, your Hulu, gas, electric, um, you can really use this for anything. So we've seen a lot of users who uh, start on Nacho Nacho managing expenses for the business, managing subscriptions for the business, uh, create a different account. So I could create a new buyer account over here and it would just, Bring, give me a blank slate. I can assign myself a, fit, a physical card. I could take that to the grocery store. Um, I can swipe that at uh, Metro. If, if you have a train in your city that, that, that accepts that, um, really Nacho Nacho can be used for any kind of expense. So for Lauren, parent it forward. Love the name, by the way. I'm also on a new member meeting for nonprofit court cooperative. I have like 10 of things and don't know which delete and software. Are we allowed to get some one-on-one -on -one help getting information and figuring out? Lauren, yes, absolutely. We are more than happy to help you go over the different kinds of software that you're paying for and um, help you in the process of deciding what kind of software to eliminate as well as which ones to migrate to Nacho Nacho. Um, we'll, we'll share our, contact information at the very end, more than happy to help you through that process. And then we have another question from Joel Hall, Dancers and Center Online. How does this reconcile with QuickBooks? Would all pay payments appear as Nacho Nacho? Yes, so it would appear as Nacho Nacho and then it, there would also be a code indicating the vendor that was paid. And this would actually, we actually have a direct integration with QuickBooks. It's a fantastic question. So you can connect your QuickBooks accounts right over here in the app and all the different transactions are gonna flow right through. Thank you for that, Joel. Are there differences between personal and business uses within Nacho Nacho? So they're, they're essentially two different accounts. Um, you can create a personal account. So one, one buyer account, this will, will be for Acme Corporation. This is gonna be my business. And then the other buyer account, buyer account is gonna be personal. We see many people have one account over here, which is corporate, and the other account, which is personal. There's not a significant difference in how it works. And then from Tom Brown, Amazon bills can get pricey. Are there credit limits? Sanjay, you wanna take that one? Yeah, so <clears throat> our system is a pay as you go system. So what that means is that we, we're not really giving you a credit line per se. Um, and you can spend as much money as you want, as long as you have sufficient funds available to pay us. So whenever you pay, for example, Amazon, let's say you have a $20,000 bill. Um, when you make that payment to Amazon, we're actually paying that on your behalf. And then right after that, we will collect that, those funds from your bank account. So as long as you have funds available in your bank account, um, there is no limit. Because we're actually not lending, we're not a lender, we're a software company. So we don't actually need to um, evaluate your credit lines, uh, credit uh, risk, as long as you have funds available in your bank. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for that question, Tom. 
And the next question is from Richard McConnell. Does your interface work with QuickBooks Enterprise or just QuickBooks Online? Um, Sanjay? It should work with both. We have in direct integration with uh, QuickBooks, so it should work with both. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then from David Lycam, are there additional service fees? So at the moment, the fees that you're getting charged as a TechSoup member, you're gonna get charged $2.5 per month per user, um, just as a platform fee. And if you decide to connect your debit card or a credit card in order to pay for Nacho Nacho, there's the 2% and 3% transaction fees on top of that. But aside from that, there are no transaction fees. Oh, there's no additional service fees. Great. Are there any additional questions over here? I don't see any lots of uh, great comments, great information. Yes, the recording is available. You'll get the recording and the slides within 48 hours. Um, there are another question in the chat room just popped up in the Q&A, excuse me. Oh, last question, one sec. I get a feeling this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> Do all the costs get debited once at month end? That's a great question. Um, Sanjay? Oh, yeah, so we're a pay-as-you-go pay system. So every time you use our card, we draw the same funds from your payment source. Um, so it's, it's not month end, it's uh, pay-as-you-go. Yep, there you have it. And I'm also going to Enter my email address here. You already have the sign up link from Aretha, who she, uh, who just put it in the chat. But I'm also going to add my email address here. If you have any questions about the um, platform, if you want to chat about some individual help, more than happy to serve you however we can. Um, so it's Patrick and Nacho Nacho.com. Feel free to, add, to, to reach out uh, to me with any questions. I have a question. Yeah. Nacho, nacho. why two nachos? <laughs> Well, I, I think I'll let the founder. <laughs> so one nacho was too expensive. Two nachos was much cheaper. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. This has been fantastic. I have learned so much. There's so much new technology always, you know, happening and coming to us. And But this is like a lifesaver. So thank you both, um, Sanjay and Patrick, for sharing this platform. And no one's gonna forget the name Nacho Nacho. It's our pleasure. And I just also wanna put it out there. Um, we do have this enormous marketplace of different kinds of software where uh, we have direct relationships with the, with the actual vendor. So if you're in the marketplace for new software and you want a little bit of help in identifying the best tool for the job, um, more than happy to be a resource on that side for you as well. Awesome. With that, everybody, have a great day and make sure you take care of yourself as you're taking care of others. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.